In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we gather on this fourth Sunday of Advent with Christmas very close at hand that we gather in great praise and openness to God's divine mercy as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist. So let us prepare to celebrate this Mass, mindful of our sins, and let us be open to God's forgiving love. Lord Jesus, you filled Mary with hope before you were born. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were assigned to Elizabeth of things to come. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are an ongoing source of hope and mercy for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem <clears throat> Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is the ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they shall remain. For now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Lord, Lord make, make us, us turn, turn to you. Let, let us see your face and, and we, we shall, shall be saved. saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, Lord make us, us turn, turn to you. you. Let, Let us see, see your face, and we shall be saved. saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down <clears throat> from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, Lord make, make us, us turn, turn to, to you. you. Let, Let us, us see, see your, your face, face, and, and we, we shall be saved. saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, Lord make, make us, us turn, turn to, to you. you. Let, Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifice and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are of offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I'll come to do your will. <coughs> he takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated 
through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as we gather on this December 20th, we know very well that Christmas is only a few days away. Perhaps a rather common question we hear and extend to other people is, are you all ready for Christmas? I know I asked that for the children at our school in Monroe, St. Victor's Catholic School, and of course the resounding, yes, we are ready. For others, oftentimes it means wondering if we're ready with all of our presents gathered and wrapped, with decorations up, with the cookies and other treats made. And it is in that goodness on this fourth Sunday of Advent as we gather again in Holy Eucharist in this holy season of preparation that very much we an added meeting to our You're Ready for Christmas, not just of the things that surround us in this great festival that we are approaching, but are you spiritually ready for Christmas? Are you truly focused and preparing your own heart and your own life for this great festival and the truth of what it means that God is among us. And sometimes as it intrudes, and we can get so caught up in other kinds of preparations, all of our to-do lists for the, the festivals of Christmas that, that can almost, we can almost forget our spiritual and personal kind of preparation of being able to be open to the power of what this truly is all about in our, own, our lives, our living of salvation history that the sanctifying divine power of God meets humanity in a very special, unique kind of way and changes everything. And so, are you spiritually prepared for the great festival of Christmas next week? And it is in that that we keep before us always that, that name and the title of Jesus, Emmanuel, the Messiah, which means God is with us. And so it's an awareness, too, that, that as God has chosen to break into our human history, as in true with many other ways that God has been very present to humanity before Christ and after, it's often in very surprising and unexpected kind of ways. And so we listen, go back to their first reading that Ray shared with us from the book of Micah and that whole prophetic preparation of Israel to receive this Savior and in a very surprising, perhaps unexpected way that Jesus would be born in the little bitty village of Bethlehem. Kind of could probably considered a rather insignificant little town on the edge of the Roman Empire. But yet we're remembering that that was the home of King David. And so it is in the line of David that this Savior would be born as very much a part of, of God's plan, God's salvific history. And so it is in that goodness that, that Micah talks about and, pro, and focuses us on our preparations to receive and be aware of this child ruler who would be born in a very simple, rather, again, unexpected way for a ruler in our world. In the second reading, the author to the Hebrews talks about very much a part of the preparation of the body to receive this divine spirit that is Jesus taking on the fullness of our humanity as all of us are called by our Creator God to, to really know, love, and serve God and how that is all truly embodied 
in the person of Jesus Christ, this God-man among us who would come at that first Christmas. And then in the gospel story, as we shift into the, the nativity stories and leading up to that, we move from our focus on John the Baptist as the great herald and the proclaimer pointing directly to people's awareness of now is the day of salvation, that we move to these two great women of our tradition, our ancestors of faith, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, and Mary, certainly the mother of Jesus. And we know very well that they teach us a lot as great people of faith and goodness, very steeped in the traditions of their own time, but also very much caught up in the surprises and the unexpected way that God was intervening in their lives and calling them to this very special role of being mothers of John the Baptist and of Jesus himself. And so it reminds me often one of my favorite definitions of faith among many of them is faith is believing even when it seems unreasonable to do so. Faith is believing even when it seems to be unreasonable. We think of Elizabeth who was considered to be too old to bear a son, to have a child, but yet was told and with Zechariah that this is going to happen. And we can almost experience and feel her chuckle about that and say, really? The type of response, but her openness to what that would be about. Young teenager Mary being approached by the angel and saying in this mysterious way that you would be able to conceive the very Son of God, this Jesus. And so in the midst of what seemed to be unreasonable in that own day and time and in their lives became a powerful, powerful gift. And a realization, one of the things that Elizabeth and Mary both teach us, as do many others of our faith, is that they didn't allow, or they didn't limit God to their own abilities or their own imagination of what should be happening or their own agenda or their own program, that they truly were open to become full of grace. And so we hear the story of, of Elizabeth and Mary's um, meeting and, and visitation with her and the time that they shared that great friendship but they also shared great faith in this new adventure of life for themselves, even though they wouldn't have known how that whole future would unfold in the realization of who this John the Baptist would truly be, who Jesus Christ truly would be also for the salvation of all. But again, we learn from these model disciples, these models of faith, their trust in God, but also their willingness to be instruments of God's work and God's goodness, just like you and I are called to do each and every day, even when it seems to be unreasonable and not a part of our agenda, that we continually invited to grow in our trust and belief in God, but also to put our lives as instruments of, our, of God's work, using our time, talent, and treasure for that very purpose. And so we've journeyed together in this season of Advent. And we've had these stepping stones each Sunday in the scripture readings. That on the first Sunday, we heard the proclamation and reminder of the promises of God, of this rescue mission, that I'm always with you, that I will save you. And all of that goodness that, that gives us purpose and meeting. Also in that second Sunday, we learned about that goodness of the call for us to continually prepare, to be reconciled with God when we are willing to be humble and courageous to admit our sinfulness, to be able to be repentant and know God's mercy. The third Sunday last week that we are reminded that John the Baptist tells us that we live out repentance, not as a strict penance kind of thing, but we live it out in the many ways that we very practically live and extend mercy and goodness to others. And so this morning on the doorstep of this great festival of Christmas, we join Elizabeth and Mary in rejoicing and praising God for God's mysterious, surprising, wonderful ways that God has, continues to work in our world and our lives, and will. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not, not made, made consubstantial with, with the, the Father, Father. Through, through him all things were made. made. For us men and for our salvation, salvation he came, came down from heaven, heaven. and by, by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. For our for sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. My friends, Advent is our time of hope, and so we pray for all awaiting hope throughout our world. For all Christians who are called to be hopeful people in this time of hope and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With Mary as our model, may we come to recognize God's saving plan for us inspiring us to respond in complete faith and obedience in this time of hope and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Morlino, and the leader of all faiths, that the Holy Spirit will continue guide them to proclaim the true gift of Christmas, that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. In this time of hope and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bring hope by forgiving others, those who work for peace and justice among all, and those who visit or pray for the sick and the dying, the grieving and the lonely, in this time of hope and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of hope during this holiday season, the poor, imprisoned, and the destitute, in this time of hope and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Alvin Denur, the special intention of this Mass, for all who grieve and mourn the death of loved ones, in this time of hope and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our personal needs, those are families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of promise, please receive our prayers this day, knowing well that your promises are real, including your promise to always receive and answer our prayerful needs. And so we offer these petitions in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ and hold himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, cup we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the, the glory, glory are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us minister his word of peace to those near. Peace be with you, Ray. Peace, thank you. peace be with you, Tim. Peace be with you, Brian. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass has ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a special Christmas gift for you. Be sure to watch and share in the annual One Hour Christmas Day Mass at 6 a.m. here on Channel 3. Bishop Morlino will be the presider, joined by Monsignor Larry, the diocesan choir, under the direction of Dr. Patrick Gorman, will provide the music ministry. Mark your calendars to share in this Eucharistic Liturgy of Christmas. Monsignor Larry Backey, the Director of the Apostolate to the Handicap and Pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe, was our presider this morning. The deaf of our faith community were able to share in worship with us by the interpretation of my Michel Gayet and closed captioning. Our music ministry was provided by our loyal friend, Val Thomas of St. Pius X Parish in Cambridge. Our acolytes were Brian Schwartz and Tim Childress of Good Shepherd Catholic Parish, Madison. Our gratitude is expressed to the family owners, management, and staff of WISC-TV for their public service and social concern for the homebounds of all faiths who enable this weekly television mass and the special Christmas Day mass to be brought to your places of residence. I'm Ray Tanko of St. Thomas Aquinas Parish in Madison, your lector and commentator. Until the special Christmas Day mass, remember, Christ was born to guide us and born always to walk with us each day truly present to all each day.